Hello, today's tutorial on the COBOL program is going to show you how to get the COBOL program in NetExpress to actually uh, begin using what we call flat files or sequential files for either input or output. And up until this point in the tutorials, uh, we have received data from the user and used that to run some basic calculations to form some output. Uh, the biggest difference here is that we're going to be reading a file in the COBOL program and using that in order to display some output. So let's imagine that we have a file that is composed of college football teams, uh, the names of their conference, the names of the school, the names of the stadiums that the football teams play in, and let's say the seating capacity of each one of those stadiums. So if I were to go to that file right now, we might see something like this short file. It's got you know a handful of records in here. Here's the conferences. Here are the names of the schools, uh, the names of the, the stadiums where the college football teams play, and then a six-digit numeric information regarding the total seating capacity for each school. Now up until this point, we haven't used the environment division in our COBOL programs. But now that we're going to be dealing with sequential files that are out in the environment um, for the computer to use, we need to start using our environment division. Now how we tell the COBOL program that we want to utilize a program first of all, excuse me, a file, is that we use a select statement. So the, the basic format of a select statement is what I like to refer to as select internal name assigned to external name where the internal name is what we want to refer to the uh, sequential file as in the program, whereas the external name is the actual file path or the file name uh, that resides on your physical PC or computer system. So right now, I'm just going to denote this as we want to select in file, assign to, and give the name of the file, and that was CFB Stadiums. .txt and organization is line sequential. So for our purposes that's all we would need on our select statement. Now what's going to happen here when I compile this is I'm going to get a compile time error. And the reason I get a compile time error is because for every select statement that you have in an environment division you also have to have what's called an FD statement, a file description statement in the data division. In addition to the FD statement for each unique file that we have as a select statement in the environment division, we also have to deal with what's called sections and divisions. So within the environment division, we have an input-output section as well as a file control area where the select statement goes, and in the data division we have two sections. What we've typically been dealing with uh, up to this point is what we've referred to as a working storage section, though we haven't been referring to it as that, but now we'll have to. So there's going to be two main sections in the data division, a file section and a working storage section. So in the file section, this is where we're going to have our FD statements. Remember, FD stands for file description. We're going to have to actually describe the elements that are inside CFB Stadiums 2txt which I showed you earlier right here. We're going to have to describe this file in here with a different uh, 05 level data elements. But we need to describe the file that we're referring to internally as in file and we want to say something like in record as an 01. Now we have our own individual 05s. If we look at the file, we're going to expect 1, 2, 3, 4. There are four basic columns in this file that we're going to be using to read uh, as input to display output. So we're going to have four individual 05 levels right here in our FD structure. And the first one name it what it is. It is it is the school conference name and I've already gone through here and counted these out. So the largest, the, excuse me, the widest uh, element inside this first column is actually Big East and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight spaces, eight characters long. 
So in reality, all of these are eight, eight characters long, such as SEC and ACC. They just have five spaces in there, but we need to account for those spaces. And I've already gone through and counted all of these, so it's going to look something like this. We're going to have pick X8, and then we have the name of the school, and the largest one we have right here is Mississippi State, and that is going to be a pick X17. The next one is stadium name, and that is actually going to be a pick X40 because the longest one here is Oklahoma's uh, Gaylord Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium is the name of their stadium. That is actually 40 characters long. And then finally, we have uh, stadium seats. And the number of seats is going to be 96 because there are six characters in our seats over here. So once we have described our file, what I can do is compile this right now. I get zero compile time errors. And let's go to the working, uh, excuse me, the procedure division. And as we build the procedure division, we will want to build our working storage section likewise. So I'm going to start off with my main paragraph again and I'm going to tell the COBOL program to perform a paragraph that I call Perform 100 Initialize. Now in any programming language what it means to initialize is that it's going to be done as soon as the program starts and it's usually only going to be done one time. So in the 100 Initialize in order to actually read the file, in order to read this file that we have described and using our select statement, what we need to do is actually open it just like a book. Okay, so we have open in file, but this is not enough for COBOL program. We need to tell the COBOL program what we're opening in file for. There are several options. One of them is input, one of them is output, and the others extend. There are all some, some more, but those are the main ones that we're going to be dealing with. In this case, we are only using the file for input. So this correct statement is going to be open for input or in file. Now. At this point, we're going to come to our first read statement. And just like our if structures and evaluate structures, we have an end read component that has a hyphen in there. And the only period that's in this entire read structure is at the very end read. What ends up happening when a COBOL program executes a read statement is in fact it will go to read what we've assigned is in file and it goes to the first available the next available record well because this is the first time that we're going to be attempting to read the first record here it goes to the first record and it comes back and reports one of two things it's going to report either I've reached an add in condition or a not add in condition so if the COBOL program, if the read structure rather, comes back and reports an add-in condition, it means it went off to this file and there was nothing in there. In this particular case, this is when we want to ref use a switch and instead of an end of session switch, we're going to call it an EOF switch, which stands for end of file. So I'm going to use it down here. I need to declare it up here. Let's just do a group level 01 switches. I'm going to call this EOF switch pick x value in just like our other ones alright now if it's not at end what do we want to do well at this particular case what I like to do is programmatically determine how many real records I'm reading in from this file and I can sit here and count them up and everything but that might not be good if you're using you know uh, sequential files with thousands of records long which may be the case so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep track of these with what I call a rec counter so every time I read a real record in I'm just gonna uh, increment it by one so just like switches come up here have a counters group level 05 rec counter and let me just claim this as a pick 93 and shove zeros in there so at this point what's end up going to happening is after the COBOL has performed 100 initialize it's going to come back and say okay what do you want to do next at this point the only thing we've done in 100 initialize is two things 
First of all, we've opened the in file just for input, and we've tried to read the next available record. This read structure right here tells us, one, if there's data in there, and two, does it match the file description that we have for in file? And once we come back and report a not at end condition, the values of the first record, SEC Arkansas, Donald W. Reynolds Razorback Stadium, 72,000 seats, get stored in these 05 levels. So what we need to do now is tell the COBOL program to perform a new paragraph until something happens. And that something that happens is when that end of file switch equals yes. Because if that end of file switch equals yes, we know we have no more records left in to read in this file. Okay, so what we need to do is go down here and tune our process records and build this. Now at this point, we still have the data that is left in from that first read. We still have the data of SEC Arkansas and we have not written it out. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pause uh, the recording software and come back to it in order to save time. Now what I've done in 200 process records is, is two things. First of all, I've got some display statements here that I'm going to be displaying the values that are stored in those 05 levels within our FD structure right here to the output screen and then I'm going to try to read the next available record. So if we go to 00 main paragraph, we see that 200 process records is going to be, it's in a loop and that code inside that paragraph is going to loop until that end of file switch it gets changed. And the only way it gets changed is if we reach an add-in condition. And when we reach an add-in condition, it means that there are no more records to be read, left to be read in the file that we're using for input. So after we read Big East Louisville, uh, Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, 42,000 seats, and then we display that out and come back to read this file, it will attempt to read it and say, hey, there's nothing left to be read, and it comes back and reports an add-in condition. We're going to come back up to where Tuner Process Records was called. That switch is changed from an N to a Y, so now it's going to move to the next one, and I like to have something, a paragraph like 300 terminate. In 300 terminate, where we, we can do several things. The first thing that we can do is we can tell the COBOL program to display out the number of records that we read in that file and refer to the value that's stored in rec counter. And then just like we told in 100 initialize, we told the COBOL program to open the in file for input, we just simply need to close in file in case somebody else uh, needs to use it. Not such a big problem on your, your own PC, laptop, or computer, uh, but when you're in a mainframe environment, once you're done with it, you want to make sure uh, that you close it. And of course now, I want to come up here after my perform 300 terminate and add a stop run condition. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this file because sometimes it, it won't access the data if you already have it open. Let me compile the program and let me run the program, see if we can get some output going here. And here we go, here's the intermediate file, press OK. And so this COBOL program has actually looped through, you can't see it because of the application output uh, limitations, the screen of the screen limitations, but all those files, uh, excuse me, records uh, going from Arkansas on down to Louisville, that information has been uh, spit out. And then once we reach an add-in condition, the COBOL program went and performed 300 terminate. In the 300 terminate paragraph, what we have is simply we're going to be displaying out the number of records in that file that we've counted out and closed that in file. And so the total number of records that we have is actually 12 in the CFB Stadiums 2txt file. So this tutorial is just a, a basic overview of how to interact with a, a sequential file to be used for input. Uh, in a future tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is actually cleaning this output up and making it more in a uh, uh, manager-friendly or uh, user-friendly output.